Greetings. My name is Bruce Reyes Chow, and I am the moderator of the 218th General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA. Bring your greetings to Southeastern Illinois Presbytery and the work that you all are doing. Um, this is uh, for the next nine minutes or so. I'm going to respond to some questions that were sent to me about some technology and things that are going on, uh, both in the church, uh, the larger church, as well as. Uh, the presbyteries that 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 you're ones like that you're serving. Um, you'll see here. I'm just sitting in my office. Uh, I, I I put the picture over here, the Presbyterian symbol. Uh, this is one of the paintings that somebody did for me during the stand for moderator, and it is also blocking the messiness of our office here at the church that I serve. In any case, let me get to some questions. It said uh, one first one. Recently, you spoke in an executive presbyteries gathering and encouraged or hope for a shift in the thinking of church to be open to multiple manifestations of church. Can you say more about that and the roles technology can play in these multiple manifestations? Yeah, one of the things that I do believe is the future of the church is going to be one that is not uh, like we, we like we've known, where uh, for the most part I could go to almost any church. Most of us can, and we ex we know exactly uh, what the church order, the worship order is going to be like. We know uh, for the most part what the structure is going to be like. I think one of the things that we need to embrace a little bit is the fact that church is going to be done differently. Worship is going to look different, and we can all do that grounded in um, a theological and uh, cultural heritage of being Presbyterian that I think is important. One of the ways that technology plays into this is just being able to share that in new ways, to talk about uh, theological issues, to talk about God, who is Jesus, who is, what is the church, all of those things. Technology allows us to do that in a, in a different way. I will say that um, before I get more into this, technology for me isn't something that I see as a savior of the church. I talk ask that a lot about, well, what can we do in order to blank? Uh, technology has to be used like any other medium, any other resource. We have to use it well. We have to teach one another how to use it well so that it expands our understanding of community and it doesn't become an idol of the church or the world. Um, but I digress. Let me get to the next question. On the God Complex Radio Show, that's a show that I do with uh, the Reverend uh, Carol Howard Merritt. In a recent social media updates, you mentioned it's important that our churches be who we are. You made some references to websites that don't really reflect the church be behind the website. With many of our churches struggling to keep up with culture's technology age, how do we discern if we are a church that should build an internet technology capability or if we are a church that should stick with our current ways? I think one of the primary ways you decide that is you can only do as much as the community is willing to do. And the community has breadth and experience. And if, if, there are no, if there's no one in the church that engages in social media, technology, then you can't force that upon people. And I think that if the, but if there is... There are a group of people, there are a few folks who want to engage that and figure out how do we uh, bring that into part of the culture of the church, then then you do figure out how to go about um, bringing those folks in. The key is you can't see technology as uh, something that is going to save the church. It's just that's not going to happen. Technology has reflect, the level of technology that you use has to reflect really who you are. Because if you pretend that you're this high-tech, highly social media plugged in group, and then folks show up and realize, well, you just lied to us, that's not going to do anything for our churches and doesn't give a very good witness of who we are um, in, in a sense of being honest and having integrity. Uh, next question is, some churches have been trying to outreach like introduction to Facebook, classes and email for grandparents, classes. Have you heard of other unique forms of technology-based outreach? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I think one of the good things is things like this. If folks are gathering together knowing that we have to figure out what to do. We're not, re we're not rejecting outright anymore, but we have to be thoughtful about how we use technology such as email and texting and instant messaging and Twitter and Facebook and all these kinds of technologies. How do we best use those? So gathering together folks who are open and willing to learn, I think, is a primary way we as, especially Presbyterians, can do it. We have these natural gathering places to begin to engage in some of this. I would also say the best way is for folks just to dive in and be open to the possibilities and to walk with somebody through these kinds of, you know, get with somebody who's on Twitter and just sit down with them for an hour and, and see, okay, what are you doing? Why is this important? How does this work? And you can discern whether this is for you or not. Um, what does uh, so internet and social media do for your ministry as a pastor? Well, the church that I pastor is a very unique congregation. The average age of our session is 27 years old. It's a group that's highly mobile, very transient. It is one manifestation of what I believe the church can be and should be. It's not the church. It's not what we all should strive to be. But technology plays a huge role in that. So, uh, for instance, Twitter, people put something out, both celebrations and struggles, and folks in the community will respond and with just a prayer, 
with a word of encouragement, uh, with a question, something, anything. Uh, it also works because that's how we communicate. We produce very little paper here, and so everything is done online. Uh, we uh, use technology uh, in, in our outreach. Uh, one of the ways that we use technology here at the church is a... Uh, is a is an organization a company called Twitter or no, called Twitter called Yelp. Yelp is a, a review service, and that's where everybody finds their doctors and their uh, daycare and all the services they need. Uh, the church that I serve is the highest rated uh, and reviewed religious organization on Yelp, and that's a key way that people get to us. So all those things kind of create this internet presence for us that people see who we are even before they come and meet us in person. Uh, and it's true; it's who we are. Uh, it's not fake. Uh, we tell the truth to people. And they finally meet us because of what they see online. Uh, what role, responsibility, opportunity does the denomination have in informing, equipping churches for effective use of technology? You know, I think we're past the day where we look to the denomination to provide everything for us. I think uh, if the denomination at a national level, if we're wise, we're going to figure out where there are pockets of energy and figure out how we come alongside of those things in order to share the resources and the the net that we have to offer. Uh, so things like this, I think, are important to see uh, at a presbytery level or even a congregational level or even outside of the norms of the structure. Uh, denomination, we have to figure out how do we support and come alongside of those things. And that's going to be the way that denominations help technology move forward because technology in a, in a, in a Web 2.0 open space world is not top down. And so we need to live that and not hold, that, hold on to old ways of even... Uh, wanting to experience uh, the ways that we learn and engage. Um, how do we respond to those who say the internet, email, texting, Facebook, Twitter, and other such media are pulling us apart as a culture and the church must resist the temptations to use X technologies? I, I agree, those do pull us apart, but that's not all they do. I think that the church has to be discerning in how we use these media. That one of the things that we do is we stand against this, uh, this thing that happens in culture of uh, individualism and isolation. And technology can be a primary way that we help to uh, stop those trends. So technology in themselves don't create those, but how we use them definitely do. So we can be a little more thoughtful. Last couple questions before I end up. Complete the sentence with the semblance of realism. I would love to see an iPhone app or computer program that would uh, um, be able to compile and aggregate uh, Presbyterians who are engaged in these kind of media um, and to engage us in the things that Presbyterians stand for and have stood for. An application that easily connects us to each other, uh, allows us to share gifts, thoughts, um, and interactions uh, in, a, in a way that's really effective. The entire world would be would receive one tweet from you. What update message on Twitter would you send to the entire world? Uh, Twitter, 140 characters. I think to the entire world, and this comes from my Presbyterian understanding, is we best discern the mind of Christ and the will of God together. And if we can do that, uh, which technology enables us to do so, I think we're on our way to creating some great community. And the last one, what is the most informative and thought-provoking Presbyterian-enabled podcast today? Uh, this is a shameless chance for a shameless plug along with instructions for listening or downloading. Uh, yes, uh, we uh, I'm part of a, a, podca a podcast and live internet show called The God Complex, uh, God Complex Radio. Um, and if you just uh, 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 plug that into... To, um, uh, plug godcomplexradio.com. Uh, you should be able to get to us. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, it's good to be with you. Have a great meeting. And uh, again, thanks for sitting here with me. Please feel free to send me an email, Twitter, Facebook message, and uh, let's continue to talk. Uh, on behalf of the denomination, blessings and peace be with you.